Um, already, I think we should um, start and everyone else will um, join uh, timely. So welcome everyone uh, to the webinar, which I promise you in the group that I would ask Dr. Brim Kumar to kindly spare some time for us and uh, just give me one minute. Uh, spare some time to uh, talk about a uh, reference, right? Dr. Prem Kumar Alam Govan um, is a senior computational scientist at Royal Surrey County Hospital in the Just Foundation Trust, and he's been working there since November 2016. Um, he works with solving computational problems related to breast cancer research. Um, his job description includes simulating various x ray physics processes and tissue cancer models. Um, he also holds a postdoctoral research fellowship at University of Surrey from April 2011 to October 2016. Um, he was a postdoctoral researcher at Natural History Museum between March 2010 to March 2011. He also served as a visiting professor at Buckinghamshire New University where he worked uh, between 2008 and 2011. Uh, previously, he has held positions as data analyst, software engineer, and switching engineer. Um, he holds a PhD degree in video signal processing from Brunel University, London. He holds also a master's uh, in mobile and high-speed telecommunication networks uh, from Oxford Brookes University, and a BE in electronics and communication engineering from Madurai Kamaraj um, University. Uh, Dr. Prem Kumar is also creator and founder of uh, Ref and Write, which has become the choice tool for academic writers around the world uh, who speak English as second language. Uh, and it has turned out to be a huge benefit for uh, thousands of people around the world uh, who have been trying to write research papers and have gotten rejection from uh, manuscript editors and journal editors and peer reviewers because of um, their lack of um, scientific writing. Um, his tool has gained immense popularity around the world also for its ease of use. It's a lifetime licensing uh, process. Uh, it's easy uh, and intuitive interface. And he also will talk about um, the features in this presentation about um, how to optimally use ref and write. He will also discuss the future developments that are in pipeline for ref and write, and he's going to practically demonstrate how to write research papers using ref and write and all its features that you can use. I very warmly welcome Dr. Prem Kumar to the webinar and that we are organizing today. It's a pleasure to have you, sir, and um, you have the screen now. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Minaj, uh, for the introduction. Um, uh, let me share my screen uh, for uh, just providing me this um, opportunity to talk about uh, Ref and Write. Um, so, as uh, Mihat said, um, I am one of the co-founders of uh, Ref and Write. Uh, so, um, uh, before jumping on to the demo, um, I would like to briefly uh, talk about the motivation for Ref and Write. Um, why was a ref and write created uh, in the first place? Um, I'm assuming uh, most people who are um, uh, uh, listening to this um, uh, listening to uh, this webinar are either academics or uh, students um, doing a pursuing degree uh, in the university. Um, so, um, so this was the, the main reason for uh, for, uh, for for creating ref and write. Uh, uh, was uh, to the main motivation behind Ref and Write was to uh, what was the problems I faced as a PhD student and a researcher. Um, so uh, particularly with uh, with academic writing. So so um, as you all know, academic writing uh, requires um, a, a formal writing style, um, and uh, uh, you are required to use uh, scientific terms. You are not allowed to use uh, colloquial terms. Um, uh, it has to be very scientific and formal, um, and you are required to use um, subject-specific vocabulary. It means that uh, you are required to use um, scientific terms and phrases uh, um, uh, that is deemed uh, acceptable uh, by your peers. 
Um, and also it's very important that uh, the scientific papers and the theses are referenced properly. It's very important uh, uh, you um, cite other papers and other materials um, uh, uh, which has done um, similar research to uh, what you are doing. Um, and also it is very important to avoid uh, plagiarism. Um, so uh, it is not a good idea to copy uh, large chunks of text from uh, previous published papers without actually giving credit to the authors and because that might land you in a big trouble. Um, so you should either rephrase the text uh, or and if you are directly quoting um, statements from previous papers, then you have to make sure that the quotes are backed up with proper references. So th these are the reasons for uh, creating uh, uh, the reference right uh, uh, word plugin. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a native English speaker myself. I'm from India uh, with academic, academic writing when I did my research and uh, my supervisor wasn't happy with, uh, with, with, the, with the quality of the uh, quality of the papers I was producing. And so that that, um, uh, that became the motivation behind Reference Write. It was actually created to help myself write my research papers. Later, um, um, I, I shared the tool um, with my friends, uh, which they found extremely useful. And then I decided to commercialize it. And uh, we've been trading, um, uh, the Reference Write was, uh, was commercially available um, in 2004, and uh, we've been uh, we've been uh, um, actively uh, the company has been actively trading uh, since uh, 2014. Okay, the features of Reference Right. So, so what uh, may, uh, makes Reference Right uh, stand apart from other research tools? Okay, uh, what is so unique about uh, Reference Right? And so, uh, the, one of the main uh, benefits of Reference Right is uh, is a Microsoft add-in. It means that it operates within Microsoft Word. Um, um, I, I can safely say that uh, the majority of people who write their papers they use Microsoft Word uh, as the preferred word processing tool. So I, I, we created this tool as a Microsoft Word plugin. So that is one of the biggest features because you don't have to switch between different windows or between different tools and everything happens between within Microsoft Word. You write your paper and you can use all the features of Reference Write within, um, within um, uh, Word. So one of the uh, uh, one of the primary features of Reference Write is to provide the user to be able to, able to provide the users the ability uh, to search previous papers. So we uh, created a feature where people can import hundreds and hundreds of papers into Microsoft Word, and they will be able to perform a keyword search within Microsoft Word when writing uh, uh, their papers uh, and theses. And, and uh, this is uh, predominantly to promote uh, a type of learning called as imitative learning. So imitative learning is a type of learning that you learn from your peers. So when you are writing something, um, you, um, uh, you look at how other people have said uh, what you're trying to say, and then you refine uh, your text uh, by uh, after looking at how other people, how, how other experts and how other peers in your field have, um, have phrased uh, what you're trying to say. So this is called as imitative learning. You just learn from your peers. And so the, the one of the main features of Reference Write is to provide users with a glimpse of how the thing you're trying to say is being said by other authors in the field. This is called imitative learning. So by just looking at um, looking at uh, um, uh, looking at uh, statements made by other authors in their published papers, you can gather writing and language ideas, which is very important. And also, you can also do uh, plagiarism checking and referencing. I know, um, um, so you can import your own papers, and uh, it, it is and uh, it, it's so easily to subconsciously um, uh, so repeat yourself, and it could be uh, seen as self plagiarism. So, um, so by by searching through papers, you can check. You, you can um, um, you can you can, you can do a few things. You can reference the papers, and you can gather writing and language ideas from previous papers, and you can also check for plagiarism and just make sure that your text is unique. So this is the this is one bit of reference right, and the second bit is we spent three years uh, building uh, one of the largest academic phrase banks. What we did was, 
uh, we built a phrase bank that contains 20,000 academic phrases. These are uh, frequently uh, used phrase, uh, um, phrases uh, in scientific papers. Uh, because with scientific writing, you can only uh, say uh, something uh, in a certain way. And because if you're using a formal language, you're supposed to say it in a certain way. Um, so we, we built a database of 20,000 academic phrases. And how did we build this database? We uh, have we put together a, a team of experts, and they're all uh, they were all working in academia, and uh, and um, they manually went through three thousand papers, and they collected these phrases uh, from these papers and compiled it into a phrase bank, which is available through Preferentwrite. And and I can proudly say this is, uh, as far as we know, it's one of the largest academic phrase bank that is available and uh, um, I, um, and it is even bigger than the Manchester Phrase Bank, which is one of the most popular phrase banks that is widely used. Um, and so it has been categorized, it's painstakingly categorized into different categories and subcategories for ease of use uh, 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 to make it easily accessible within Reference Right. Um, so, so this is the gist of what the tool does. Um, um, so now what I will do is to, um, to show how these things work. And I will do a, a demo, I will share my screen, I will do a demo of, uh, of Ref and Write. As I told you, yeah, we, we spent years building the search feature and uh, we just, uh, we had a lot of focus groups and we, we spoke to a lot of PhD students to understand how they search and, um, and, um, and how we can make it easier for them. And so with this, so you can use this as a referencing tool, or uh, you can use this as a plagiarism checking tool because as you can see here, if I do a search here and I have kind of repeated myself, you know, mammogram is the most common, I have made the statement in my previous paper. So I wouldn't have guessed it, but Reference Right tells you since I have imported a document, Reference Right is flagging me, hey, there's a lot of reds here, you need to rephrase this text. If not, you might get into self plagiarism issues. And so it's up to you can use this as a plagiarism checking tool or as I told you, as a, you can use it use this as a, as, a, as, a, as a tool for a practicing imitative learning. You just you import uh, papers, any paper that is relevant to what you're writing, you search and have a look, just have a quick glimpse of what's been said before. Now, how did other people say what you're trying to say? And then you learn from them and then you revise and uh, polish your text. And that would improve your standard of your text significantly. And particularly for people who uh, who suffer from mental block, I mean a writer's block, you know where you know what you want, what you want to say, but you just you just you can't quite get it. And this just and for uh, this would be a perfect platform for them. You know they can have a look at how other people have said, and you just just suddenly you will be able to pick and pack words, and you will be able to phrase things uh, yourself. And uh, and so that is one of the most powerful features. You can search for anything you want, and if you want to make it author specific. That's fine as well. It'd be easy to just, it's just a click. You just expand it and you just open the file. That's, it's, it's, it's so easy. And you can, you can, um, uh, you, can uh, you can have 20 or 30 PhD theses, a thesis uh, with, uh, with 400 pages each. And it would just do the search for you within, in, in milliseconds. It is quite fast. It could, uh, we spent years optimizing it. It's quite fast. So, um, there are a lot of tutorials online um, explaining how to use these features and I've just been briefly touched upon how it is used but uh, uh, but if you want to look at a, uh, if you want a, uh, uh, an extensive uh, uh, explanation of how to use the features and uh, if you want somebody to take you through the step-by-step -step process there are training videos on our website and uh, I would uh, I would ask you to uh, check it out and okay, so now now we you know we know how the uh, search bit works. Uh, let's move on to the the academic phrase bank and the paraphrasing part of Reference Right. So um, as I told you, we just spent two years. Uh, we got a, a team of academics go through three thousand research papers to put this database together, and this is one of the largest uh, uh, phrase banks um, uh, uh, till date to have such a such an extensive collection of phrases so you can access you can access the uh, phrase bank by um, simply clicking on the academic phrase bank and it brings up uh, the phrase bank and uh, if 
the phrases are have been painstakingly classified into various categories and subcategories and uh, we we just went through the papers and understood what sort of statements uh, would a researcher be required to make in the introduction part of it introduction part of the paper you know the importance of topic and uh, and is it an active research area is it a well studied area and uh, and uh, and numbers timeline so so uh, so these are the sort of statements you'll be required to make in the introduction section of the research paper and then we move on to the problem definition okay problem definition and uh, what is the um, uh, what is the uh, uh, is it a known issue or is it an unknown issue by just clicking on the link it will it will pull all the academic phrases that been uh, that's been assigned to that particular category or theme if you like and uh, and you have to read what is the complexity and what are the difficulties and challenges and then you have to explain then you have to do the most important bit of any research work that is literature review which would be one of the most extensive uh, uh, um, uh, parts of your um, um, more extensively researched part of your thesis or paper because you need to know uh, what's out there and uh, you need to be able to explain what the research gap is you need to be able to explain what is out there and how you, your work is different from what is out there you know what is the uniqueness of your approach and it captures everything it captures everything it tells you, you know, what is there what are the drawbacks and what is the recent literature what is the seminal or pioneering work and uh, and are these studies uh, good enough you know uh, are these is, is, is there uh, are these uh, is there a bit of controversy uh, attached to any of these are these questionable um and, uh, and and so it pretty much captures everything and then previous evidence you know what's what is out there and uh, what is lacking is the evidence disputed so you have you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, phrases um, readily available for you and also all you have to when you write a paper all you have to do is to follow the flow you start with the top and just move on to the next bit move on to the next bit move on to the next bit in addition to giving you ideas as to what to write and it, it also gives you a sort of a checklist of what should be in the section that is that's something we were trying to achieve you know just wanted the students to be able to know what sort of things should be there in literature review and for each thing that will be required to say um just give them some ideas as to how they can say it and that's exactly what this does and uh, and uh, the research gap and then we move on to your work you know what are your aims and objectives what is your hypothesis and what is your motivation what is your study design and is it a is it a uh, um, um, is it a retrospective qualitative study is it a quantitative study um so um uh, somebody raised a hand let me see um chat yeah, I think it's Junaid, uh, but um, he's going to ask questions in the end, and I have a couple of others also, so you can continue, and uh, okay. we can take the question in the end. Uh, so Junaid, if you could just uh, hold to hold on to that thought, and you know, ask your question mm -hmm. at the end. Okay, that's fine. So uh, how am I doing with time? Can I keep going? Or yeah, um, yeah sure. Um, I think you can take uh, five or ten more minutes, and then uh, I want to give the participants more options to actually ask your questions. And we can go to the website also and talk about some frequently asked questions and uh, the um, reselling option in Pakistan and things like that. Yeah, sure, sure. And then. Um, technical statements, we've got data analysis, statistics, results, you know, uh, is it a positive finding? Is it a negative finding? Is it neutral? Was it unexpected? Was it uh, inconclusive? You know, it, it should be, it should we generalize your results or should we interpret with caution? So these are all the things you'll be required to say in your research paper and it pretty much captures everything. Okay. Um, and um, discussion um, and then uh, we got other bits as general statements you know um, criticisms implications limitations um, um so this is this is this is extensive and it will take you it take you a day to sort of go through all the categories and subcategories so what we did was we created an another feature where instead of you having to manually go through all the categories and subcategories the software will run uh, a text analysis on your text and tells you uh, uh, tries to uh, figure out what you're trying to say and it pulls those categories or themes from the phrase bank okay let's see what happens here if you do writing ideas 
there you go it basically it takes the keywords from your text and it goes through each of the categories and subcategories in the phrase pack and tells you you know is this what you're trying to do is it what you're trying to do i would say what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to establish that the mammography is a popular method for picking up breast cancer it tells you popular method and click on it and there you go you have a lot of options here a lot of ready-made templates that you can use uh, to uh, polish your text okay and the three buttons you see here um what it, uh, you are asking ref and write uh, to give more like this okay you're telling you know what this is pretty close to what i'm trying to say but can you give more of this when you click on it it runs a quick search and it pulls statements that is similar to the one that was next to the three dots okay um so yeah you can again you can search you can search a theme first and then you can search phrases uh, uh, sub phrases within the phrases in uh, that uh, that pops up in the uh, result section so you can you can uh, again uh, for detailed uh, um, uh, uh, explanation on how to use this uh, you can just uh, watch videos i'm just simply touching upon the concepts here and then uh, and if you don't want even have to if if you if you if you want the tool to just just give you paraphrasing ideas and you don't want to go through the phrase bank and you don't want to go through the categories and the categories is absolutely fine if you are short of time you just simply have to click on the statement and just do paraphrase and it will bring possible uh, uh, statements of, of phrases that you can use to say to refine your re refine what you're trying to say you know you can say a common technique is to use mammography for breast cancer screening you could say um uh, uh represent um a, a, a common method um or just maybe we can just look at more like this and see what pops up okay uh, we can say uh, these are uh, uh, two common methods used for picking up breast cancer we can say mammography and tumor synthesis um and this represents the common the technique used to evaluate so so it gives you um it gives you ideas you know just like it give it jump starts your uh, creative thinking and it tells you you know what you can say the same thing like this or like this but it's up to you you don't have to copy exactly what is in the phrase pack but you can you can pack words and phrases and just start constructing things um, um you can start to get creative with what is available through the tool um so paraphrase and so at the moment uh, the rough and write uh, uh, allows you to paraphrase uh, or get paraphrasing ideas for one sentence at a time but one of the features we are working on at the moment is an automatic paraphrasing and rewording feature which is quite similar to what Quillboard does and so where you just copy a passage you select the passage and hit you know what rewrite and uh, and it will automatically rewrite the text for you so it will uh, replace the phrases replace the words and if it finds there is a, a better scientific equivalent it will automatically replace it it will rewrite the text for you this is particularly useful when you want to use uh, a piece of text from a different paper but you don't want to use it exactly as it is then uh, that is the feature and we are expecting that feature to be released uh, in the next few months and, um, and so so you will have phrase bank writing ideas paraphrasing tool you'll have rewrite tool and you also have a word choice tool here where uh, let's say uh, you know what i want to see whether if there is a better word uh, um, if, if can if you can replace the word technique with a better word you select it go for word choice and it tells you you know what you can replace technique with method and i'll i'll explain you how what this color coding means uh, let's choose a different one here let's say common and uh, word choices it tells you that you can replace word common with widespread and there are other possible synonyms but the word widespread is uh, is more frequently used in previous research papers than other words so the color coding is based on the frequency of usage uh, the frequency of occurrence of a particular synonym in previous papers so that is a database we built we just uh, we uh, did a frequency analysis of various uh, words uh, uh, 
appearing in research papers and it it, it does this it's, it's different to it's not like microsoft uh, microsoft word does offer you word replacements by giving you a list of synonyms but what reference right does it goes on one level above it and it does a frequency analysis of the synonyms and tells you you know what you are, you are better off using this synonym is because this has been used uh, a lot of times in the previous paper hence it should be more scientific than other synonyms so that's what you get but uh, we will in, in in few months down the line so there'll be an another button here rewrite which would pretty much do uh, what quillbot does for you it will rewrite the text for you um, and uh, and so the microsoft word version of reference right is lifetime license it means that you get updates for life you only have to pay once and you get free updates and if you follow our facebook page or uh, if you follow mihaj's page and we will inform mihaj whenever there is a update to reference right and he'll be able to he will post it uh, on the page and you'll be able to download the latest version and this is for life and you don't have to pay again it's just a one off fee um, and the another feature I would like to quickly go through before uh, 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 wrapping up the presentation is the read option. Read. So it's basically it's a text to speech converter. So it reads the text back to you. So one of the the most uh, effective ways of proofreading your text is by letting somebody read the paper back to you. There have been a lot of research studies on this where, you know, the, the best proofreader is, you know, you give, give the paper to your partner or your friend and ask them to read the paper and just tell you if there are any mistakes. And even better, the software does it for you. You just, after you're done with your paper, you let ref and write, read the text back to you and you will realize that you will be picking up a lot of grammatical and structural issues when your paper is being read back to you because uh, because um, you will know you will know when it's not right when it doesn't read well uh, you will know you'll just go back and just make some changes just maybe maybe shorten the sentence a bit maybe just split it into two and just sort of let the software just read it back to you again you just keep doing it until you think the paper reads well so that's the reason for uh, this uh, feature here and then settings and you can just pretty much control anything you want. You can uh, control the uh, number of results you want. You want to, or you can control the, the the color being used to highlight the keywords. And here it tells you if you are importing uh, hundreds and hundreds of documents, you don't want all the results to come from the same document. You want all the uh, you want results to be spread across multiple documents. So this tells you that search all the papers, but limit search results uh, to five. Uh, items per document and you can even sort of reduce it to two you can already increase it so it's up to you and uh, you can you can you can define whether you want to use synonyms you want exactly uh, search uh, you want to do an exact search just simply search um, what is here what you have selected or you want uh, the software to expand it a bit and in addition to searching for technique if you want to if you want the software to search for the word method as well which is a synonym to technique you just simply have to turn it on and uh, so that is an import, but the default import size is 100 pages. But we do understand that if you are importing PhD theses, they're looking at uh, 300 to 400 pages. So if you are importing large documents, all you have to do is to change the import size to 500 pages, and you'll be able to down import books and PhD theses without any issues. And also, you can specify if you're running a plagiarism check, uh, if you're using the software to do plagiarism check, you can tell the software whether to include the stop words. When I say stop words, this is what I mean by stop words. The E's, the for prepositions and articles. And these are uh, uh, these are what we call as stop words because they don't actually hold any meaning. So when you are running the search, it ignores those stop words. Yeah. But you can ask ref and write to include the stop words when you are searching. Now, There you go. It, it, it includes uh, all the prepositions and articles. This is particularly useful when you're using reference rights to detect plagiarism, plagiarism. And because you want to see uh, how much of, you want to see the exact overlap between what you have written and uh, what, what's been previously written. So, uh, so when you're using, if you're using reference right for plagiarism check, then you have to, it is advisable to 
use include stop words uh, in your search. Um, that is uh, pretty much, and also we are uh, we are uh, also working on some uh, grammar correction features, uh, which would be quite similar to Grammarly. It won't be as extensive as Grammarly, uh, but um, so one of the features we are working on is that uh, we, it will do something similar. It will do all the basic grammatical checks. Um, but if you want uh, something that's very extensive, then you may might want to purchase a proper uh, uh, grammar correction software. Um, I think I pretty much captured everything. And um, and so we are a team based in UK um, and, um, and, uh, and, uh, um, and Mihaj is now a reseller for Pakistan. He's an official reseller for Pakistan. Um, so one of the problems we had was, uh, one of the problems that people in Pakistan have is uh, there's a lot of online payment uh, 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 gateways are blocked in Pakistan. So we have a lot of requests and the people actually just wanting to buy the product, but they're not able to buy because it is not possible to purchase it online and because they, the payment, uh, the gateway is blocked in Pakistan. So with, uh, with now uh, Mihal in place, uh, Mihaj in place, and he, he would be able to, uh, because he has a direct line of communication with the head office and he'd be able to make all the purchases on your behalf. And he'll be able to provide, um, you know, help you with some level of technical support. Uh, but we have a, a technical team in UK, and uh, we can directly contact us anytime, and we will uh, we will try to fix your issues as soon as possible. And uh, if it comes through um, uh, Mihaj, uh, then uh, it'll be even fast tracked. Um, um, uh, um, and, and that's me, Mihaj. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, um, Prem. It was uh, a very detailed um, and understandable presentation and overview of the tool. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could give me the controls, I just want to share my uh, screen uh, to show the participants and that the Rough and Write has a very elaborate website in which mm -hmm. um, they have uh, listed most of the questions that uh, you would probably encounter while using uh, rough and write and so i'll just share my screen here so if you see the screen uh, here I quickly i forgot to say uh, forgot to say that uh, the rough and write is only available on windows at the moment but we are pretty close to getting the mac approved mac version approved by microsoft and uh, so the mac version should be out before end of the month so uh, so both mac users and windows users would be able to use rough and write from uh, in a few weeks time yeah thank you so uh this is also the uh, frequently asked questions section so if you have any questions about what languages right ref and write supports um is it safe to install uh, about um what kind of files can be imported in ref and write for now all microsoft documents and pdf files can be imported and we're working on adding web pages also so if you find information online uh, and articles uh, that there is no option to download um, as in PDF or MS uh, word format. So you can do that also. Uh, and uh, like Prem already told you that you up to 500 pages you can uh, import into ref and write. And we're still yes. working to actually um, improve it um, in the future uh, as well as the paraphrasing tool that Prem Kumar told us about um, that we are in the process to actually make sure that we have the paraphrasing tool within the Ref and write, so you don't have to actually buy a separate software uh, killbot uh, that is overly priced. So you will find both functionalities in one software also. Um, and also for the uh, purchase, uh, but before I actually go to purchase, you can see the training video section. So if you want to see the demonstration, uh, Prem has done a very good job explaining a lot of features, but if you still have any questions, you can go to the training video section. You can watch their introductory webinar, and the writing software, um, language, how to import and search documents. Um, also, the recording for this webinar will be available so you can um, re-watch um, the steps that Prem has done um, at the comfort of your own home and at your own pace as you can learn it. Um, as the Prem mentioned that um, I am the reseller for uh, Ref and Write and it's very generous of him that um, we are able to announce a special discount for my students uh, for this product. Uh, it uh, costs around 30 
abounds for uh, the product itself, um, but I have different discounts for my students that I will be sharing in our exclusive WhatsApp group. Um, and if you have any technical questions about that, if you need any support um, issues, uh, let me know and I will um, handle these um, questions uh, to the maximum of my ability. Uh, and uh, now I have a couple of questions um, that uh, people have asked in the chat. So one of the, what, one of the questions and that Sarah asked earlier was that um, the phrase bank that we have, the academic phrase bank, is it specific for engineering or social sciences or is it generally applicable to all uh, sciences? It is generally applicable to all sciences. We uh, we took a good sample of papers across multiple disciplines, so it was it wasn't specific. We had a had a, had a good uh, diverse selection of papers ranging from medicine, engineering, social sciences, chemistry, physics. So uh, the, the phrases you are seeing uh, is uh, applies to uh, any uh, subject discipline. Okay, uh, so that means that you know that's uh, it's not a problem for the students with different disciplines and uh, to actually. Um, find it um, hard to um, relate themselves to different uh, phrase banks that are Yes, available. and we deliberately just made sure that all the phrases are, uh, are generic and uh, so they don't have any uh, subject inclination. And also this is a phrase bank that uh, is not static, it would grow over time. So that would be constant updates made. We still have people going through papers and extracting phrase banks and just topping it up. So it will keep growing over time. So it is not a, uh, it is not done yet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Sarah has another question about uh, ref and write that uh, does it faci facilitates features like Kailbot and Grammarly. Um, so I think uh, Sarah Prem has already mentioned that uh, we are in the process uh, to incorporate paraphrasing tools. Uh, so you would you will not need Killbot uh, separately, um, and it's going to be very soon that you will be having same features in uh, Ref and Write. As for Grammarly, if you want very extensive features, um, tone, style, fluency, and things like this, um, you can use that. But soon that's going to be available in Ref and Write also. Um, so there is another question by Jeanette: Can we import uh, books that we download from the internet into uh, Ref and Write? Uh, yes, is my undergraduate provided, student. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, provided it's in the PDF format, it should be fine. But uh, I do. Uh, but you may have to go to the settings and change the PDF import limit from 100 to 500, because I'm assuming that you know uh, uh, these books are likely to be at least like 300 or 400 pages uh, in, uh, in length. So if you just go and to the settings and change the import page size limit from 100 to 500, and provided the uh, the book is in PDF format. You should be able to simply just as simple as dragging and dropping into the dashboard. Okay. Um, the question Sarah um, wanted to ask is that if I buy it today, um, are the features that are going to be coming in future, will I be able to avail that? Yes. The Windows version, you are purchasing a lifetime license. And uh, so any future updates, um, you just simply have to uninstall the previous version of Write. You can just simply uh, uh, install the latest version that's out there with all the new features, and you don't have to purchase a new license. It's a lifetime license. Okay, and it also says on the web page, Sarah, that uh, all the updates that are going to be coming, it will you won't have to buy them separately. Um, so this is lifetime license, so you will buy only once, and you can use it for the rest of your life with all the free updates also. Um, yes. Then Zonera is also the similar question that how many months we can use after buying. So it's a lifetime product Zonera. You don't have to buy monthly or yearly. Uh, so once you buy it, it's with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Uh, whether Ref and Write has ability to analyze freshly written paper, uh, for example, what is missing in it? Um, what do you mean, Azim? Do you mean that um, can it analyze the new papers? I mean, if they're published recently, I don't think it really matters uh, for Ref and Write. Uh, what do you say, Brain? Yes. Yeah, as far as uh, the, the, as far as you download a copy and just simply import it into, you can create a new library called New Papers, and you just simply drag and drop the PDF file, and there you go. And you should be able to. It's the same principle. It's the same as searching any PDF file. Okay. Fair enough. 
Jeanette, the price for the product itself is 30 pounds, but um, as my students, they get special discounts um, that other people in uh, Pakistan don't. For example, you know, uh, if someone else actually contacts me uh, about Ref and Write, uh, they will have less discount than my private group. Um, you guys being part of it, um, I have a special discount for you that I'm going to announce in our WhatsApp group with the voucher code. Um, you will have you will receive full uh, technical and customer support with that. Uh, if you have any issues, uh, more than welcome to let me know, and we're going to uh, fix it for you. So, do you have any other questions? You could ask any question uh, from. Uh, Prem, it could be about your research work, PhD, um, the academic writing, um, anything. You know, he's um, here to help you out uh, throughout uh, this journey because one of the motivation, like he mentioned in, in his talk, is that he found this tool very useful for his own PhD. You know, it was really hard uh, for him to actually uh, be writing academic papers as someone. Uh, with English as second language. And I think the same issue applies to all of us that English is our second language and uh, we certainly need uh, some jump start or uh, at least uh, get past the writing block where we can start writing uh, our research in a manner that uh, it does not get rejected. Um, so, you know, it's not a product that he's uh, selling without any personal experience. So it's the love of labor that, you know, um, he mm -hmm. found it very helpful. And, you know, now he's sharing his research with everyone else uh, so that you can find uh, it beneficial for your work. So do we have any other questions? So what if we change our device, mean our laptop after buying Ref and Write? Does it provide an account to their customers? Uh, yes, uh, at the reference right, is, you are, although you are purchasing, um, you'll be purchasing a personal license, uh, but we do understand that, you know, nobody uses one computer nowadays, you know, they have a laptop and there is a work computer. So you can activate the license on three devices that belongs to you. So it will be a personal license, but it, it is valid for activation on three devices that belongs to you. Um, and so... But if you have already activated on three devices, but if you want to, um, uh, let's say, if, if you have changed your laptop, um, you can use the same license provided the old laptop is out of use, provided you are not using the software in the old laptop. Um, yeah, at, at any given point, you can have the license active on three devices that belongs to you. Okay. Uh, there's one more uh, thing that you can uh, try before, if you want to uh, try it out before making a purchase decision, is that um, you can download a 14-day uh, free trial from a Ref mm -hmm. and Write website, and it's a limited version of um, the uh, Word add-in, so that means that you will have limited uh, phrases uh, in academic bank and limited uh, functionality, but if you want to try it out for, uh, before you decide to buy it, you can do that for free for 14 days. Um, so I suggest you do that. And some of um, you people who have already tried it, um, you can now um, buy the full version also, and uh, you will have the discount code also uh, for that. Um, so I strongly urge that uh, you at least try it um, if you think um, that, um, if you're skeptical about the product, uh, once you try it, I'm pretty sure. I personally use it for my own research. Um, I think I've shown you in the workshop um, that um, I have the Ref and Write plugin in my Word, and then I use a lot of phrases from that uh, in my research papers. So um, I can, with 100% confident, uh, confidence, recommend you that you know this is going to be a worthwhile purchase. So if there are no other questions, um, we can uh, thank Dr. Prem for his time. Yep, it is a pleasure to be here. And, uh, and um, yep, so we are, we are uh, and uh, one thing we do is we, we are all ears, you know, if, if you guys have um, any thoughts on how to make the tool better, and you can always drop us an email. You can just drop us an informal email that will be uh, taken on board, um, and we'll try our level best to implement it as well. And so, so good luck all with your PhD and research. And uh, let's keep in touch. Thank you, Dr. Prem. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, I hope this session has been beneficial for everyone else. Um, and 
we thank you for your time and uh, hope to have you um, on board some other time also. Okay, thank you. Thank Thanks you so much. Have a nice evening. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you.